Welcome to Cataclysm Now. My name is Ryan, and this is the after action report for turn two of Battle for Stalingrad. I'd just like to mention and thank uh, Donald Johnson for reminding me that I was doing the uh, Soviet reaction chit pull incorrectly, that actually the Soviets should be pulling two chits as long as they were in possession of uh, Mamayev Kurgan, the large hill that's dominating the middle of Stalingrad. So when I started this round, this week's of fighting, I made that a central objective for the Germans to capture to prevent that. Starting with the first phase, we have the air power phase. The Soviets did earn three points of level bomber, uh, but they still don't have any dive bomber points. The Soviets launched a quick raid against a lone infantry battalion and was able to eliminate it from the board. Now that uh, Mamiyev Kurgan provides two Soviet reaction chits, most of the German level air power uh, was focused against that and was able to destroy a couple of stacks and reduce one, thereby paving a way for German infantry divisions later in the turn. The next phase was the artillery bombardment phase. Not much happened here. The Germans uh, in the southern end of the board didn't really move their artillery. They shelled a couple positions in the south, slowly reducing. But I'm finding that the uh, Soviet artillery um, is best, one, used in reserve, so it can help with indirect fire. Uh, two, it... Uh, is really good um, as just a regular unit. It can move and attack just as a normal unit. Uh, it can also defend. So in some of those hexes where the um, firepower is multiplied due to it being fortified, um, artillery can be very, very uh, potent. So I think going forward as the Germans, they're going to have to uh, course correct uh, in turn three. They're going to have to use their the air power phase and the artillery phase to specifically target um, artillery on the board because uh, oftentimes, depending on the hex, the in um, the phase that you're in, artillery has to be taken first as a casualty. So the Germans have to take make a concerted effort to eliminate the artillery across the board, considering that mon um, or not much artillery comes in the way of reinforcements later on um, and the Soviets increasingly have to use on the trans Volga artillery which has very limited range and is ba essentially good at only protecting the banks so that's something that I found that the artillery is very potent and the Germans at least in the first two weeks of fighting here in this battle have squandered their air power and their artillery specifically in terms of targeting and conducting counter uh, artillery fire against the Soviets. Broadly speaking, the Germans attempted to focus on the three sectors that they did last week. Striking in the south, pushing through the neighborhoods into the more industrial areas of the southern zone, striking towards Mamiyev, uh, Mamiyev Kurgan, and then bringing up uh, artillery, well, not artillery, bringing up infantry in the north to close through the woods and to threaten potentially the factory districts. Time was of the essence for the Germans. Eventually, they would bring on the 100th uh, Jaeger Division, which was going to be funneled into Mamiyev Jurgen, but first, before any Soviet reaction chits could be pulled, several elements of the German uh, 71st Division and uh, an element of the 295th uh, pushed into Mamiyev Kurgan and uh, fought bitterly for it. Um, high casualties on both sides, but the Germans were able to take the specific square or hex atop uh, get their first victory hex, but also deny the Soviets the ability to draw two reaction chits. Eventually, a Soviet reaction chit was pulled, and 
reinforcements came across the ferry in the center of the city. A pontoon battalion was also placed there, so it had a capacity of 18, and elements of the 13th Guard Reserve, the 284th Infantry Division, came pouring across and launched a limited counteroffensive against uh, the uh, Mami of Kurgan. Only one uh, hex was attacked, and they shored up the eastern uh, slope of Mami of Kurgan. With Mami of Kurgan secured, brought up elements of the 71st and the uh, 100th uh, Jaeger, which will be in a position the following week to either counterattack if Mami of Kurgan is lost or to fully uh, buttress it and fortify it. Lacking even more Soviet reaction shits, the Germans pressed their offensive first in the south, or southward, I should say, um, from the town of Rynock, just north in a suburb of Stalingrad. Uh, they struck down to uh, Spartak, Spartakfuka. I think I'm saying that right. I'm butchering that. Um, but limited advances using also additional um, mortar, infantry, or mortar uh, battalions that have been brought on. Limited success. Uh, further southwest... Um, closer actually to Mami of Kurgan, uh, elements of the 295th Infantry, Divi Inf Infantry Division launched attacks around the October Gardens, eliminating a couple units but taking uh, some heavy casualties themselves. In the south, the German offensive continues just west of the railroad station. Elements of the 29th Motorized Division, the 14th Panzer, Division of the 94th Infantry Division are slogging it out with the Soviets. Here, um, I misspoke um, in my last video um, in reference to the 29th Motorized having to be withdrawn, so I'm going to ride them into the ground. The actual 29th Motorized doesn't have to be withdrawn. It's just uh, ele uh, not elements, but units equal to what was originally put on the board, so they can be taken across the front which I'll have to do because at this point, this sector can't afford to lose uh, the entire 29th motorized. But this is also where the artillery is becoming uh, a real thorn in the German side. Not only can they contribute indirectly with, um, with defensive fire, but actually taking a hex that has you know the printed combat factors on it is just, it's incredibly bloody. And it was really emphasizing the fact that the Germans have to use coordinated artillery and air support to take out artillery, uh, Soviet artillery, across the board. Because it is entirely too expensive um, to fight the artillery in the hexes proper. Eventually, a Soviet reaction ship was drawn and additional reinforcements came across the ferry. Uh, elements of the 193rd Infantry Division and the 95th Infantry Division. A total of 16 counters, all 2-8s, and they came rushing towards um, Mamiev Kurgan to take it back. And boy, was that a mistake for the Soviets. Appalling losses. They lost um, nine of those uh, combat counters. They in tried to encircle... Mami of Kurgan, which they did, but because of the uh, effects of terrain when they were in the clear, um, attacking a fortified hex, and then also with the addition of a nearby uh, German uh, artillery bringing an in indirect fire, it just utterly annihilated them. Uh, so, in a way, the Soviets got a taste of their own medicine in the south. And um, it didn't really change the situation too much, but it definitely put a halt to any Soviet aspirations of taking back the hill this turn. From there, um, a couple units were shuffled here and there. The thing with the Soviets in this game is they lack a lot of offensive firepower. So even though they didn't pull a lot of reaction shits throughout, they have their lines set up and 
basically they're waiting for the German wave to come. And uh, so far they've been breaking the German wave. After that bloodbath at Mami of Kurgan, uh, things settled down across the front. Germans mostly bringing up units, filling in the gaps, planning um, their next set of offensives the following week. The Soviets just holding onto their lines, no need to counterattack and waste their firepower when they can grind the Germans down in the uh, heavy structures uh, that they're holding and where they've mostly made their lines. Um, at this point, with the final Soviet reaction phase, put a couple more uh, trans Volga artillery, still mostly out of range of the Germans at this point. Also placed down a couple of militia units um, that they're entitled to at the end, as well as armored units um, that are coming out of the factories. And I did roll for the uh, burning oil and uh, rolled a six, so that ignited those. So that's actually going to wreak havoc on um, visibility for uh, the German and uh, Soviet air power uh, come next turn, which piggybacking off of what I said about the coordinated attacks against Soviet artillery that has to happen for the Germans, that is obviously uh, going to be frustrated for them. So overall, uh, this is the situation at the end of the second week. Uh, not going really well for the Germans. Part of that has to do with unlucky die rolls. Also part of that is me learning the system and not leveraging the full advantages that the Germans have. Also, uh, Donald Johnson, he had commented that it took him a while to crack or break the, the sort of code or, or the, the rules in so much um, for the Germans to win because the Soviets clearly had an advantage as they did in history. Um, you know, a lot can be said or argued that the, this specific battle in the city didn't need to happen. Um, but the rules are at least holding up, um, in terms of history, why, um, just prolonged, uh, urban combat, um, just doesn't bode well. It doesn't work. Um, especially with the objectives of this campaign. So it may be a little frustrating right now to play when I'm not fully grasping the rules, but there is uh, a uh, historicity there uh, that, of course, that I appreciate. I don't quite need for games to be balanced uh, as long as they are helping me understand a campaign, understand a battle, um, then then I'll, I'd be satisfied. But... We'll continue on uh, into week three uh, of the battle, and uh, hopefully um, we can figure out uh, what to do about the Soviet artillery and uh, see if the Germans can push a little more into the city. Uh, thanks for watching.